How's it going everybody? CJ here. Back another video. We're doing another first thoughts today. This first thought is on Shale, Shale, Dean of Radiance, and Ambrose, Dean of Shadow. Before, before we hop into this though, remember hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. We got a bunch of links down below. We got Twitch, we got Twitter, we got Discord, we got Patreon, we got TCG Player Affiliate Link. Utilize those. Talk about the channel. If you can buy any of the cards, buy them through that link. If you want to support the channel, we get the Patreon. Discord, chat with us. It's a fun time in the Discord. Um, and I got the Pokemon channel down below. Help me choose my starter. Ah, and we're going to hop into this. So, Shale, Shale, I don't know how to pronounce it. I think it's Shale. It looks like Shale. And Ambrose. So, I don't really like Shale. It seems very meh. Best part about it, honestly, to me, is just a two mana one one flying vigilance that can get bigger. I mean, it's fine. It's not insane. It might do something. Against I don't know. I don't know. But Ambrose is really cool. But we're gonna start off with Shale because it is the front side of the card. So some cards that I thought synergized pretty well with Shale. We got Micaeus the Lunark, just because it puts counters and everything as well, and it comes in with counters, and it's just yay counters. We got Anafenza, Kin Tree Spirit, just so you can bolster every time a creature enters. And you're going to want to go wide, so you can have a lot of creatures entering with this deck. Uh, Dragon Scale General, another bolster card, so you can bolster a lot. Like, <laughs> if you're going wide enough, you're going to attack with a good amount of creatures, you can bolster a lot. You got Bosby Solidarity, just to throw a counter on everything, easy. You got Sword of Truth and Justice. Which it lets you put a counter on something and proliferate, which is really nice. And that is all I have that's just for Shale. There's some more counter related stuff, but that's going to be in the both section because both these cards care, care about counters, and Ambrose is much more interesting, in my opinion. So, Ambrose can be a very, very cool aristocrats commander. It's got card draw stapled to it, it's got a sacrifice outlet stapled to it. It's a cool card, and I got a lot of stuff that would be good in this deck. But one of the things, it's a weak sacrifice outlet because of the fact that it can only really sacrifice something with one toughness, so you're going to want better sack outlets in the deck. Uh, those include the altars being Phyrexian, Ash Nods, and Dementia. You can throw in Phyrexian Tower and High, and high Market. Both those are good lands that you can use to sacrifice. Yawgmoth is a really cool sacrifice outlet, and Viscerasia are a classic. All those seem like great includes. And if you're going to be running all this sacrifice stuff, you might as well run stuff like Grim Horror Specs, Midnight Reaper, Harvester of Souls, and Dark, Dark Prophecy, so you can draw extra cards, because you're already drawing cards off of Ambrose. And uh, Ambrose has one very cool synergy, being that Persist creatures work really well with her because she can put counters on things. So that's and just kind of like recursive stuff. So you like drop a counter on something. Like if you have a sack out, you can drop a counter on it, sack it, it dies, it comes back because of Persist. And the next turn you can drop a counter on it and sack it and it comes back with Persist. And it's just like a recurring value there. So some Persist creatures I want to talk about are Lesser Master Core and a Putrid Goblin. Those because they're very cheap. Then you also got... Uh, oh, did I, I didn't pull them up. Oh, well. Uh, Puppeteer Click. So you can also reanimate stuff every time you do that loop. And Kithkin Spell... Whatever. Kithkin Spell Duster. So you don't even need a sack outlet. You can sack it to blow up enchantments over and over and over again and draw cards. It seems like a very good include in the deck. Uh, another way you can improve this commander is with Death Touch. So a Basilisk Collar, Gorgon's Head, any equipment that gives Death Touch seems great in this deck because you can just hook it up uh, to your commander, to Ambrose, and suddenly, because she, she deals damage doing this. So if you have Death Touch on her, that means she will kill. It is a she, right? Ambrose. Oh, Ambrose is totally a dude. Uh... <laughs> I, said, it, it, I believe it's a dude. Uh, my bad. But you can throw a death touch on him and then you can just start picking anything off and drawing cards every time you do. Or you can draw cards whenever you pick something off that's yours, but if you pick off your opponents, you don't get to draw cards, but like you get to murder on a stick, which is nice. 
Uh, you're gonna be doing a lot of sacrificing. You might as well get some mana out of it. Stuff like Pitiless Plunderer, Black Market, and Revel and Riches seem great. Plus, Revel and Riches is also an alternate win con, so that's a win-win. You can throw in Pond of Ulamog, Sifter of Skulls, and Ogre Slumlord to get additional creatures when you sacrifice stuff. And you can run Noid Procession because you're gonna be making a lot of tokens off of this stuff. So that seems like a win. That seems like a great card in this deck. That's a great card in a lot of the new decks that have come out. Uh, Luminous Broodmoth seems like a great include because you get the sack something that comes back immediately. It's nice. Uh, you can throw in like Reveler Karmic Guide combo. You can sack them, bring them back, flip, bounce them around a lot, and bring something from your graveyard back in and stuff. That seems like a good combo in this deck. A lot of value there. Uh, you got a lot of sacrifice going on, so you might as well throw in like Dictate of Erebos, Butcher of Malakir, and Grave Pack to hurt your opponents. You can also throw in Martyr's Bond for the same effect, but it's a little more expensive. I mean, Butcher Malakir is a lot of mana. Uh, you can throw in Tevish Zat. Tevish Zat seems pretty cool because he's got a Sacrifice Outlet on him and sac create Sacrifice Fodder that will die to Ambrose if you tap her on target one of the Thrall tokens because it's only one power. So it would become a 1-2 and then die from 2 damage being dealt to it, so you draw cards there. Seems like a good uh, include with, because of that. Uh, you can win the game through Life Drain, being Zulaport Cutthroat, Blood Artist, Cru Cruel Celebrant, Bastion of Remembrance, Vindictive Vampire, Falconrath Noble, and Sir Conrad. All those seem like great includes in the deck. That's a good win con. Um, you can run Athreos, because that way when your stuff dies, your opponents lose life or you get it back. That seems very good. Uh, Blood or Tasa Karlov and Alenda Duskrose seem pretty cool in the deck. Tasa to double up your death triggers, and Alenda's got a really good death trigger that makes a lot of tokens. And whenever a death trigger happens, she gets bigger, and you can put counters on her, so she's got the counter synergies as well. She just seems very, very good in this deck. Uh, Blood Gas, Skyclave Shade, Nether Trader, and Reassembling Skeleton are all very recursive creatures. So you can bring them back in, in and out of the graveyard a lot, so you can get a lot of value off of them. Especially Blood Gas, that card's sweet. Another trader is also very, very good. And then Skull Clamp. You can equip it, sack whatever it's equipped to, to draw extra cards. So you can draw three cards off it if you had a counter on it. That seems very, very good. And that is what I have for Jest and Bros. There's now the section of cards that are good in both decks. So, you've got the Ozolith. You're making a lot of counters in both decks. You might, and especially in the second deck, because you're sacking stuff, bringing it back. This way, you don't lose those counters, so you can move them around, add them. Like it, this, Ozolith is going to be a very good card in this deck. You got an infinite combo with Thornbite Staff, a Sack Outlet, and any Persist creature. So you tap her to put a counter on something and deal two damage to it, and then Thor, then sacrifice like. So you have creature, hey, say you have like just, I don't know, a Zulaport Cutthroat here. And you tap, but a, or a Persist Creature, sorry. <laughs> say you have a Putrid Goblin just sitting there. You can tap, put a counter on Putrid Goblin, sacrifice it to any Sacrifice Outlet, that's an infinite sack outlet. Say Ashnod's Altar. You sack it to Ashnod's Altar. It comes back because of a counter on it. Or it comes back because of Persist. And because it died, it untaps your Ambrose because of the Thornbite Staff. Then you tap it again, do that again, because when you put the plus one, plus one counter on the Putrid Goblin, it'll lose the minus one, minus one counter that it had. And you can just an infinite number of times. And if you do something, if you do it with like a Puppeteer Click, you get all the cards in graveyards into play under your control with haste. If you do it with like I don't know, if you, like, if you use the Ashnod's Altar, you get infinite mana. If you use Phyrexian Altar, you get infinite colored mana. If you have a bl uh, Blood Artist in play, you win the game. Like, it's just an easy way to win the game here. It's a good combo, and it's all, like, th all the cards are good in the deck already. Like, they're all already good includes, whether or not they comboed together. But it's just bonus value that they can win the game. A uh, couple other cards that seem good in this deck. You got Felidar Treat and Cathar's Crusade just to throw counters on everything very easily. So, like, Felidar Retreat makes it so you have a very good board wipe protection because you can play a land, all your stuff has counters on it, 
board wipe happens, you draw a ton of cards. Um, you got Basri's Lieutenant, so that way you get value off of your creatures when they die with counters on it. Especially good in Ambrose. You got Nikara Layer Scavenger, which lets you draw additional cards and but you lose life on this one, but it's another card draw outlet. Uh, Cauldron of Souls, so you can tap it and give everything persist until end of turn. So anything that you had that died, like if you end up getting a board wipe, you can persist everything back into play, get a lot of triggers and whatever, and then use your commander to remove those minus one minus one counters. And then you can persist them again in the future. That seems like a great card. There's Animation Module. So when you're putting counters on things, you can tap to put a counter on something or tap to put a counter on everything. And then pay one mana to create another token. So just a good token generation for a very low price. Uh, we got Together Forever, which is a very cool card. You can pay one, choose target creature with a counter on it. When that creature dies this turn, return that card to its owner's hand. So this allows you to just like, whenever you're going to sack something, you can pay one, you get it back no matter what. Like, boop, 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 easy. Easy. Like, it's uh, that seems like a great card in this deck. And this deck is actually just very, very cool. You don't really need a lot of reanimation stuff in this deck because there's just so many ways that you bring it back immediately because of the counters. I love it. I love this a lot. Orzhov Counter Sacrifice seems very cool. And the last card I want to talk about is Karn's Bastion. Just proliferate on a land. Seems good in both decks. And yeah, that's what I got for Shale and Ambrose. I highly recommend if you build this deck, build it as Ambrose. Shale seems pretty meh, but it's a cool deck. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys next time. Peace out, everybody.